Hi, um, I'm Richard, and uh, thank you for joining launch reception for the International Management Excellence Awards. I'm joined today by my colleague, Andrew Headley, who is the Chair of Judges. He'll be talking in a few minutes about some of the things that are going to be particularly important to the judges and um, maybe what some of the things that you and others need to do in order to encourage them to look at positively at your submissions for the awards. So I suppose really what's what's changed in the last year? Quite a lot, really. I mean, apart from horrible things happening in other countries, um, the awards have changed their name and the awards are now the International Management Excellence Awards. Now, you may be wondering why. And the simple answer was we looked at the firms that were entering from all many, many countries. And we took the view that actually what was really important was that these were international awards and not simply UK awards. We've always had many firms from Ireland, but we were going from the States and many other countries as well. We remain uh, our fantastic sponsors, the Financial Times and the Harvard Business Review. That's amazing. And we're continuing to focus on the unique contribution of leadership and management to the business of professional services firms based worldwide. Those things haven't changed. And as you'd expect, rigorous evaluation of any initiatives. And Andrew will talk about that in a sec. Um, the second thing is we've got a new venue. Um, thank you to Ian Beveridge and his team who are with us tonight. Um, the London Sky Lounge, I, I think, is just a, an astonishing piece of 3D art. Um, but more than art, it's actually a great place, as I'm sure you're finding, to meet and chat. And we'll be using it for the awards ceremony, which is on the 15th of June. And if some of you are fortunate enough to not only to enter, but more importantly, to get shortlisted, and then hopefully we'll see you there, as they say. Um, the other thing that we've changed is that we were kind of not quite clear a year ago, were we going to be uh, staying online? Were we going to be reverting to a more traditional meet and greet a networking context? And we took the view that we would go online. And it was partly to do with the international, because at the end of the day, it's a bit tough to ask somebody to fly across the world in the hope of winning a trophy. Um, but less time, less time commitment, that's quite important, particularly for people based there. It makes it much more accessible. Um, and we're holding it at five o'clock, which means it's great for North America. Um, it's improved inclusiveness. Um, of course, it massively reduced emissions. ESG is for, an issue for all of us. It lowers cost, particularly for people who are traveling. I think the main thing it did, though, was, and some of you will have seen the videos from last year, it's, it enabled the when I interview the winners live, I can do though without a backdrop of noise. And if you try that in a live, there's too much noise, just can't do it, it's a distraction. And that, in most importantly of all, enhances the learning transfer over the fantastic achievements of the winners. And we're gonna do that again this year. So I think that's probably um, as much as I want to say in terms of the organization and the structure. The other thing that hasn't really hasn't changed significantly is the themes. Um, we have three themes, if you recall, make your business more productive, help your clients be more productive and enable your community to flourish. And I kind of think of it in terms of a timesheet. I said, if you're not spending your time for the benefit of the business, for the benefit of your clients or for the benefit of your community, hopefully you're either on holiday or hopefully not ill. But otherwise, what are you spending your time on? Because those fundamentally are the core building blocks. Now, the challenge we've always found um, and this was something the judges commented all too often, was that people tried to sort of fit their particular uh, initiative into a set of words that had been designed in a fairly narrow category-based way. This kind of takes you away from that, because the truth is that in management terms, it's always going to work best as a team issue. It's always going to be work best when the firm comes together across the management team and contributes and develops an, an initiative. So to narrow it down to one particular place or one particular person, I don't think really works as well. Whereas under the theme based approach, which you've had four or five years now, that really makes that you have to be a little bit more innovative, maybe a bit more thoughtful about, OK, what's really who's re what's this initiative all about? But beyond then deciding which of the three it fits into, that's as far as you need to go. Then you will find in the guidelines that we've shared, there's some indicative categories. So if you're really not too sure, have a look down the list and that will give you a good steer, I think. So I think that's probably as much as I would like to share at this stage. But what I now do, if I may, is um, pass the baton to Andrew, our chair of judges, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, his role and the judges role and what he is looking for or what they are looking for 
uh, for from the submissions. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Richard. And uh, hello, everyone. I'm really pleased to be here just to speak to you a little bit about the the process that we go through and the way in which uh, the judges work work through the submissions that, that we receive uh, in order to evalu evaluate them. Um, by way of background, I've been a judge um, first, I think, in 2005. I've been the chair of judges since 2017. I guess over that period, it's been really interesting to see how the awards have evolved, uh, how the quality of the submissions has, has improved over time, the thought and the rigour that goes into the submissions and the whole evolution of that, of, of that process. Um, in terms of the process that we follow, I think it's probably quite important just to give you a little bit of an insight into that, because I guess one of the uh, one of the oft heard criticisms of, of any award is, you know, is the credibility of the process. You know, are you actually going through something with rigor uh, in, a, in a forensic way to arrive at the best possible at the best possible uh, uh, winners for each award? So in, ter in terms of, of these awards, you know, there are, there are generally four judges for each category. Um, Certainly, a minimum of three of three judges. Uh, so you know, it's not one person deciding. There's a there's a real effort there to get a diversity of view, a diversity of opinion, and, and to arrive at you know the, the best and most rounded decision. Each judge is a subject matter expert in the category that that they're judging. So they understand the world in which their topic lives. They understand that you know the opportunities, the challenges, the tensions. In a, in a great position then, you know, to to evaluate the submissions. Um, the way it works is each each of them scores independently on a consistent template, on a on a on a platform which uh, which Richard provides. Um, having done their independent scoring across a range of criteria, they then get together and they meet. They meet to discuss, to debate. To give each other a healthy challenge, you know, to compare how they thought each of the entries uh, squared up to the other, but ultimately to create a consensus around what, what the entry they believe to be the, the best, the winner, if you like, of the category, and and potentially, you know, those which which receive commendations or, or second or third third places. Having been through that process, the entire judging panel then meets uh, in a meeting moderated and chaired by, by myself. Uh, and each category then uh, gives a short presentation around the entries they've received and the reason why they have chosen a particular particular winner. Uh, and again, there's a, an opportunity there for the wider judging group to ask questions, to discuss, to debate, but ultimately to ratify the, the winner's list. Um, that's got to give us great confidence in, in terms of this being a, a truly objective process, an independent process. And a process which, as I said earlier, is quite forensic in terms of how it looks at each of the each of the award categories. The other thing I want to talk about today, if, if I can, is are the criteria, the six criteria that we apply in that judging process. The, the first one is really around strategic alignment. So how does this initiative align with the firm's broader strategy? And you know, those of you familiar with with Jim Collins, you know, good to great, built to last, all of that sort of really good management thinking. One of his sort of uh, famous sayings is, you know, you know, great strategy is 1% vision, 99% alignment. So strategic alignment, really important. We're also really keen to see, you know, the active involvement of the firm's leadership in the initiative. Uh, and again, if you think any initiative fundamentally is about, about change, and we refer back to some of the great sort of work on change, the likes of, you know, John Cotter in leading change, you know, it's, it's called leading change for a reason. It's not called managing change. Because fundamentally, leadership is absolutely central to any change, any change initiative. So again, we want to see evidence of active leadership involvement in the initiative. Uh, innovation is key. You know, how is this innovative? And by innovative, you know, we I mean how does it do things differently and do things better than we've been doing things before? So that innovation, it may be around service innovation, it may be around markets, it may be around process, people, systems. But what's the innovative thing in there? That's different and better about this particular entry. Um, how do we educate stakeholders? You know, how do we engage and how do we build consensus and give effect to, to that whole change piece? So again, education of key stakeholders is one of the one of the six criteria. And you know, what's the positive impact been? What's the evidence? You know, whether it be client experience, employee experience, other stakeholders, wider communities. How do we demonstrate? 
the positive impact that this initiative has created. And, and finally, let's measure it. How do we measure that? You know, evidence is key. Uh, what are the proof points? What are the KPIs we've used? Where did we start? Where did we end? How do we demonstrate that that improvement over the life of the of the initiative? What are the leading indicators? What are the lagging indicators? Um, and that sort of leads me, I guess, into probably the final point I'd, I'd like to make, which is over the years, the, the most common, if you like, comment from judges is, you know, firms put in some great entries. It's all very logical. It's all very structured. But often we need more evidence and evidence is key. Um, you know, it's great coming to, to the awards with a great story, a great thinking, great strategy, great execution plan. But show us the evidence, show us the proof points that allow us to, you know, take that walking, talking the talk into walking the walk in order that we can make the best, the best possible evaluations and best decisions. That's all I'd like to, to, to say for now. Really encourage everyone to get involved. You know, if you can obviously download the, the briefing pack, it's, it, it's all on the all on the website. And, uh, and hopefully you look forward to receiving your submissions in due course. Richard, over to you. Thanks very much, Andrew. I, I'm kind of wondering who, where these paragons of virtue are going to emerge from with those really tough criteria that you came up with. But actually, it's great. Every year we have some amazing entries, and I'm sure we will do in 2023 as well, that really do genuinely tick all those boxes. So, uh, But thank you for being expressing them so eloquently. A um, couple of things we really wanted to say, really just picking up the last point, and the dates are in the document that Andrew shared. It's the end of next month, which is the end of February, is the uh, submission date and uh, the entry, the, the ability to enter will be going live, um, I think, Monday of next week. So within a very short period. Um, but we wanted to uh, obviously pr to present to you first, have the video available uh, and then and the form available so that they all run together. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is there's, um, what shall I say, you know, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say what's in it for me. It's not quite what I mean, but the reality is we all know that if we want to go to the managing partner and we want to um, put in a submission, then they'll say, well, you know, what do we get back? And yes, of course, you get a lovely trophy, but there's a bit more to it than that. I think, first of all, I would remind you that you are, um, these awards are supported by the Financial Times and Harvard Business Review, which is um, marketers amongst us would recognize as some of the most important and valuable and powerful brands in the world. So that's important in a way, but there's also a bit more than that because we will actually be uh, sharing the judges' citations with you. Um, we will be producing a highlights video of the winners uh, from the night on in June and each of the individual interviews with the winners and they are live and I've thought about them and got some rather sort of challenging questions up my sleeve usually. Um, so they're the things that people find really valuable. I've certainly noticed that people tend to stick around even after their category on an online event, which is pretty unusual. So that's nice. And then we bring it all together into a, we call it the winner's booklet, but it's really nice document that's available. And you will obviously see it from the website if you click through. But, you know, we really wanted to celebrate success and to make sure the people who win genuinely is something they're proud to share with with their friends and their relatives, as well as perhaps with their, their boss and the rest. So we really do want you and to succeed, but also when you the if you uh, went for the, the winners should actually really feel that you know their 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 contribution and their initiative has been properly um sort of brought to the attention of not just uh, the members of the managing partners forum but um, the much broader community that we serve so i just wanted to leave uh, that thought with you um if we are here in hq to answer all your what i might call administrative queries we had one in today saying does the award let have to relate to a particular period to which the answer was no um we think often an initiative can take several years to mature so when you feel the time is right put it in and if you started it 12 months ago or three years ago it makes no difference what we're really interested in andrew said is there's something that is actually has been shown to be demonstrated to be successful and guess what that means in practice the evidence will only be there once you have been successful not aspirational stuff um so um do continue to come back with your points and comments um and obviously uh, we will look forward to then emerging with a shortlist which comes out as i think you're you're probably aware at the end of march beginning of april and and then obviously through till the middle of june when 
we have the important ceremony, which will be in this amazing venue that uh, Ian Beveridge and his team uh, Tem from Telepresent have kindly organized for us and thank him for that too. So I think that's probably enough for me and you, Andrew, unless you want to say anything else. Nothing more for me, Richard. Thank you. Excellent. Well, let's get back to networking. Bye for now. <laughs>